it was about 30 years ago that I worked on the for the first time on a long-term sustainable energy scenario. It was published in 1984. It was only for the Netherlands. And renewable energy by that time was in a very early stage of development. So it was somewhat of a theoretical exercise. Nevertheless, I was able to show that it's possible by 2050 to run the whole Dutch economy on renewable energy. In the same year, I founded, together with a number of other people, a company called Ecofis, a company that has now developed into a broad knowledge company in the area of sustainable energy. We started working on solar energy, and we started with small projects, but eventually we managed to equip an entire city district, this is Amersfoort, with solar photovoltaic cells. And by that time, it was built, it was the biggest sustainable energy project in the world. But many others started working on solar energy as well, as solar energy is now a rapidly growing industry with a growth rate of over 40% per year. We also started working on wind energy. And one of the highlights is this offshore wind farm that we helped developing, the Princess Amalia wind farm on the North Sea. By that time, it was the biggest and largest, off uh, far furthest offshore wind farm in the world. But many others uh, are working on wind energy as well. And also wind energy is a rapidly growing industry with growth rates nearly 30% per year. So this led us to go back to the original question. Is it possible to run the entire world on sustainable energy? And some say it is easy. Every hour, the sun gives us as much energy as we consume in a year. So who cares? Others say this may be true, but the lead times will be much too long, and we will see nothing like that in this century. So we thought we need to do the analysis. And we worked on a report that was uh, recently published, the energy report that we did together with WWF. And there we describe how such a future could look like in 2050 again. So a little bit about the analysis. We started with the needs of the people. What do they need for housing, for transportation, for products? How much will they consume in 40 years from now? Then we asked ourselves how much energy is needed for that if we do that in an efficient way. And what type of energy carriers do they need? And then finally, how can that all be sourced from renewable sources? Wind, solar, biomass, and many others. And here are some of the results. First of all, energy efficiency is most important. There has been strong technological development in the area of energy efficiency. And the possibilities are much bigger than what we thought 30 years ago. Instead of an increase in energy demand, it's possible for the world as a whole to more or less stabilize the energy consumption on the current level. If we apply the best technology and keep on developing new technologies in this area. We also found that the role of electricity, purple in this graph, will become much bigger in that case. Now electricity is only a small part of final energy demand. And in this scenario, it will grow to nearly 50%. And that is fortunate because there is abundant sources of electricity, of renewable electricity available. There are many sources, onshore wind, offshore wind, solar, solar, solar photovoltaic energy, concentrated solar power, wave energy, and several others. It will grow, but renewable energy can cope with that. Already in 2040, we see a competition between the various renewable energy sources. There is one big issue. Most, many of these renewable sources are fluctuating. They deliver power, not always when you need it. So that's a big challenge, to get the power at the right moment. And we have examined that. It is possible to find a solution. And the key to that solution 
is to strongly enforce, strongly uh, expand continental electricity grids. But also in this scenario, electricity is not the only thing. We also need heat and fuels. And heat, to some extent, can come from solar energy, from geothermal energy. But the most important source of heat and also of fuels is biomass, bioenergy. And within that group of bioenergy, waste is most important as an energy source. And waste can come from all kinds of sources, agriculture, forestry, industrial processes, households, they all produce waste, and much of that can be converted into useful energy. So that's the biggest one. In addition, we also need uh, energy from energy crops and from algae. Uh, and of course, we have taken care that all is produced in a sustainable way. And it turns out to be possible to do that with limited uh, land use that does not compromise food production. So to conclude, we found that a sustainable energy supply for everyone in 2050 is possible. And I invite you all to join us on that pathway. Thank you.